It's the beginning of a new year and time to analyze how we're doing financially and review our accounts and make sure that we're doing the right thing. So what I suggest is the beginning of every year, take a stock of the things that you are doing and should be doing and make sure you're maxing out contributions to certain accounts. For example, take a look at your IRA, your individual retirement account, either traditional or Roth, and set up automatic payments so money is coming out so you can max out for you and if you have a spouse or partner, max out both of those accounts. The max this year, 2023, is $6,500. So if you max that out, especially from a very young age, through retirement age, just your IRA, most people can retire on just maxing out their IRA throughout their lifetime. So it's important to review that at the beginning of the year and make sure you're maxing that out. Secondly, look at your 401k. If you work at a company that, that provides some kind of retirement account, 403b, SEP plan, simple plan, profit sharing, 401k, then look at maxing that out as, as well. This year, the maximum that you can contribute to your 401k is 22,500. If you're over 50, you can contribute an additional $7,500. So that's a lot of money that you can put in your retirement plan if you have those available to you. And what that means is that any money that you contribute will reduce your taxable income. So if your taxable income is say $100,000, you're taxed on $100,000. If you contribute 20,000 or 30,000, almost 30,000 if you're over 50, then that means your taxable income goes from $100,000 down to about $70,000. Or if you put away $10,000, your taxable income goes down. So there are a lot of benefit to contribute, contributing to your 401k. Not only do you put that money away for retirement, it's a, a forced savings plan. If you do that every year, that's pretty much can be your retirement if you max it up. But you're also saving a lot of money in, in taxes. I suggest putting that in simple index funds uh, whether it's in your IRA or your 401k, put it in a simple index fund. Pe people get, or a target dated fund that gets more conservative the closer you get to retirement. People get overwhelmed with a lot of these plans that have many, many, many dozens of options. Too many options leads to analysis paralysis and people will get overwhelmed and then they do, don't do anything. So just pick a simple, a simple index fund and don't worry about it, put it away. The most important thing is to automate those contributions and do it every paycheck. If you work for yourself, then make sure that you're automating it straight out of your bank account, but set up those accounts and make sure it is automated. Estate plans are important because they contain things like, like your will, your power of attorney, your, your health documents, which means that if you are incapacitated, if you're in the hospital, you're in a coma, it says uh, what your desires should be. You want to be uh, in a coma, you want to be on life support for 10 years, do you want your family to take care of you in a different way? Uh, do you want uh, your family, your relatives, a friend to take care of your kids if you and a partner or spouse both die? How do those things, how are your money, your health, and your life, how is that taken care of? and that is all embodied in your estate plan. So update your estate plan, make sure that the, the, the proper documents are in order, that assets that you have are in your estate plan that's reviewed by, by an attorney. So that's a good thing to do every year. Update your insurance plans, make sure that you have enough coverage for what you need. If, if life has changed, you've added some kids, maybe uh, growing your income, you have additional assets, maybe bought a house, make sure that you've got life insurance, and then you've got insurance on the proper things like, like homeowner's insurance, uh, insurance on your car, uh, maybe shop around, health insurance, and see if there are any better pricing you can get on that insurance, but mostly make sure that you've got the, the right amount and the right coverage. The beginning of the year is a good time to review your habits, especially your money habits, and uh, I've shared before in my story of my journey to financial independence, the number one thing that my wife and I did, the number one habit was every Sunday night we had a financial meeting where we sat down, we reviewed uh, 
what, we, what had happened with our money the last week, spending, our budget, if we were on track with our budget, and uh, what we had coming up this next week. We expanded it beyond money where we were talking about our schedule and our kids and, and my wife would do meal planning. But that was our time where we could specifically devote and get on the same page to talk about, uh, about our money and our plan and our finances. And that made all the world of difference. And we had an agenda that we followed to make sure that we were following up on everything every week. We track our, our spending in Mint. So if you are interested in that agenda, then send me a comment and I will send you that agenda. You can start doing that, developing that, that money habit once, uh, once a week. The more you can automate your investments, your, your contributions, your, your bill payments, your loan payments, then you're less likely to miss them and more likely to build wealth in those different accounts if it's all automated. After you take your IRA, your 401k, then the next is putting money in, those are long-term buckets. Look at your short-term buckets, which is your emergency savings plan. Make sure you've got emergency funds. And then look at the medium term, which is your, your brokerage account. So take the amount of money that you're putting away in your retirement accounts as a percentage, uh, percentage of your income. Maybe let's say that's 10%. Then look at what's put in your brokerage account. Say another 10%, you're at 20% investment rate. Look at what you did last year and try to up that by 5% this year. So the, the total amount of money you're investing in all of those accounts, um, calculate what you did last year and try to increase it this year by 5%. If you can continually increase every year by 5, 10%, then you'll get to the point where your expenses are low enough, your income is high enough that you're putting so much away that the numbers, the number of years to financial independence diminishes every time you increase that percentage rate. So a couple of other, other things to look at for this coming year is create a budget. Mint is great for that because you can set up a budget and then review it every week. Um, it's, people hate budgets, but it really helps you keep on track and know where all your money is. I like to log into my bank account and my budget every single day so I know where my money is going. It doesn't take very much time. And over time, you know exactly where your money is going and how much everything costs. And you feel in more control. It's a great psychological lift as well to know, oh, I pay this much for that. I pay $70 for cable. I pay my, my car insurance is uh, $77. Whatever it is, you know exactly where it is. And that gives you a feeling of, of control. And you actually do have control over your money because you know where it's all going. Next, we talk about making saving a priority. Pay yourself first and automating your investments is a great way to make sure that saving and investing is a priority and make sure it happens. Automating it uh, takes, care, takes care of all that. Invest in your education, watching, watching videos like this, reading books, taking courses, uh, learning as much as you can for not only in not only in in the field of investing, but also in everything for your job. Invest in education for your job. Take take courses or go to conferences. Read read books because the more you invest in your education for yourself, the more money you're going to be able to make, and the better equipped you will be to manage that money. Do everything you can this year to bump up your your income. Ask your boss for a raise. If you work for yourself. Uh, look at ways to optimize your business to increase your income because if you can keep your spending the same, you can take that difference and invest it. Increase your savings rate just by uh, making more money. Make a goal this year to pay down your debt. If you can pay off your debt, at least your high interest debt, then, then that's great. Make a plan of how much money you're going to put away every single month allocated it, allocate toward paying down your debt so you can become become debt free. There was an article in the in the online today that said that the number of Americans that have a car payment higher than $1000 a month has increased to about 15%, which is crazy to me that we're paying so much in car payments. That is $1000 a month is money that could be going toward your your debt or your savings and investment plan. Uh, if you're in that 
category, even if you're in the $500 a month category or any dollars a month category, consider downgrading your car or just paying off your car so you don't have those payments anymore. One, it feels great to have everything paid off, have a car paid off, but also that is money that can be freed up that you're not paying interest on, that's not tied up in an expensive car that can be going toward your future or just having in the bank. One of the downsides of monthly car payments or any car payments is that people tend to buy larger cars and spend more on cars because the salesmen are great at focusing, getting people to focus on the monthly payment. Go into any dealership and they'll always ask you what kind of payment, how much in a monthly payment can you afford? They never say, this is the amount of the car. Can you afford a $50,000 car? They say, can you afford a $500 or $1,000 car payment? Because it's much more doable, it's palpable, but that debt is still the same. So look at your car, review uh, your, your car situation for this year. Uh, going back to the weekly meeting, create financial goals for yourself, for you and your, and your spouse, for your kids, and make a plan for this year to focus on two or three different goals that are, that are achievable and doable and make a plan and review that every week of where you want to end up a year from now. You're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes with money all the time. We all do continually improve. And the best way to, to improve is continue to learn and review how we're doing and uh, list out our successes and our failures and then uh, accept that it's okay to make, mista make mistakes. It's okay to have that high interest loan or high interest credit card, but you can pay it off and resolve that mistake and move forward and do better. This year is the year to do better and uh, I hope these tips help us get off all on the right track for this year. Yeah.